Oh sweet baby Mario, it's finally over. 2020, the year that wouldn't end, has finally ended. Will 2021 be better? Who knows? But ding dong, the terrible year is dead. Marred by a global plague, bitter politics, environmental disasters, and Andrew's computer breaking. I can't think of many people who will be sad to have this year in the rearview mirror. There is, however, one part of 2020 that didn't suck. The video game lineup. Hoo boy, what a year for games. There are still so many I haven't played yet that I just know are amazing. I'm looking at you, Hades and Demon's Souls remake. Anyway, I'm Chris here at Shake the Box, and it's time to run down my top 10 games of 2020. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about some of the great games that didn't make my list first. The Honorable Mentions. First up, Visage. This game is a love letter to horror fans, with chapters pulling strong influences from some of my favorite movies and stories. I played this while it was still in Early Access, and I absolutely loved it, and the final release definitely does not disappoint. Neo 2. Neo was a stupidly hard game. Neo 2 says that was too easy and piles on yet more challenge and mechanics, but still it's an absolute delight to play, and the DLC adding new weapons was a huge treat for me. Resident Evil 3 Make. A bit lacking compared to the incredible Resident Evil 2 remake, but still amazing. It really tightened up the Resident Evil 3 experience in a big way. In fact, it may have gone too far, to be honest. Uh, it tightened it so much that it ended up kind of being too short and not giving me a number of sections that I kind of wanted to see from the original game. I just, I really wanted more. Gears Tactics. I know nothing about the Gears of War games, but this turn-based tactical game, in the vein of XCOM, is brutally satisfying. There's nothing like chainsawing a dude in half, regaining action points from doing so, hugging a grenade to give the rest of the baddies, and then ducking behind cover to giggle about it. Lastly, Cosmocrats. Now this game, I really struggled. I wanted this one to be in the top 10. And it, it, it basically is in the top 10. This is essentially tied with my number 10 if you want to be picky about it, but I didn't want to have any ties this year. Cosmocrats has great writing, one of the best soundtracks of the year, an uh, incredible branching story system, and all of this is just hidden inside of what, at first, appears to be a simple puzzle game. If this one slipped past you, do yourself a favor and seek it out. It is phenomenal, incredibly funny, super heartfelt, and just a lot of fun to play. Well, all those games are great, but they weren't top 10 great. Let's see what the big boys are up to. Here they are, the big 10 of 2020. Coming in at number 10 is Spelunky 2. I spent a lot of time with Spelunky back in the day, and for good reason. Spelunky canonized many of the conventions that we enjoy in the roguelike genre today. Spelunky 2 is what happens when you take Spelunky 1 and just shove it full of more Spelunky! I'm talking more characters, more enemies, more levels, more items, more secrets, and of course, so many more ways to die. The difference in difficulty alone is staggering. But despite that spike in challenge, I find myself drawn back into the moon's many hazards time and time again. And with the recent addition of online co-op, I can't get enough of the hilarity of accidentally murdering all of my friends and having them shout at me. Number 9 goes to Ghost of Tsushima. I don't normally care very much about graphics so long as the game in question is fun to play, but oh man, this game is beautiful. Sweeping landscapes are beautifully rendered as you look out over plains, meadows, forests, and mountains. All of it, of course, is there for you to explore. This is made all the better with a top-notch camera mode that lets you create some truly stunning screenshots. Of course, all of this would be nothing if the game weren't fun to play. Combat is snappy and fast, stealth is enjoyably brutal, and all of your little gadgets and tricks are a ton of fun to play with. As with any good open-world game, I ignore the plot in favor of just rolling around in its mechanics jumping into a stupid fort and doing dumb stuff. It's really what I live for in games. Eight is my favorite number, and I award it to Paper Mario, the Origami King. Now my favorite Paper Mario game is the Thousand Year Door, and I measure all other Paper Marios against it. This one does not reach those lofty peaks, but it comes close. The writing in this game is chef's kiss perfect. The jokes hit just the right notes, and when the characters have genuine moments, I find myself tearing up a little bit over a bunch of paper goofballs, which is amazing. Like, y y you did something right if you made me care about a bunch of paper cutouts. While I of course miss the traditional RPG mechanics, the puzzle-based combat of this one is engaging and fun. I particularly love the boss fights, which invert the combat and require some real intricate on-the-fly solutions, which is why I pay the Toads in the audience to help me out, because I'm just too dumb for it. Thank you, Toads. Thank you for doing some of the work for me. 
Now, I swear this is a coincidence, but number seven goes to Final Fantasy VII Remake. I already told you my feelings on this game in a little review I put out, but damn do I love this game. The combat feels so good! Evading attacks, lining up your own, comboing off your party member's spells and abilities. I must always ignore arenas in RPGs, but here in Final Fantasy VII Remake, I sought out all the arena challenges just to continue reveling in the combat system. Not to mention the risky choices made in regards to the story. No spoilers, but that remake in the title is a massive lie, and what that means for the next game has me very excited. My number six choice almost feels like cheating, but whatever. Persona 5 The Royal. I played over 100 hours of the original game and I loved every minute of it. Well, most of the minutes. A couple of the dungeon sections and a boss or two can go right to hell, but The Royal says, hey, what if we gave you that game you loved, but added new characters, new dungeons, story beats, an updated ending, and costumes? Obviously, I would love the hell out of it. The reason it feels like a cheat is that 90% of the content is still arguably the same, but the 10% that's new is real good. And I already love the other 90%, so it's a win-win for me. No matter which version you play, if you like JRPGs, you owe it to yourself to play one of the Persona 5s. Number 5 is a game that's responsible for one of my all-time favorite streams, and also one of my all-time favorite highlight videos I ever edited together. It's Carrion. Putting you in control of a mass of teeth and tentacles and sinew, the game sets you loose in a massive complex to devour your way to freedom. The pure delight of dangling an enemy you finally cornered like a grape into your gaping maw is the pinnacle of power fantasy, and the emergent storytelling you can enjoy as the creature can't be missed. You too can decide that your pile of goo represents the figurehead of a cult and absorb all into your fleshy folds. Praise be the sloppy dingus! Hey, speaking of cults and flesh, number four is Hellpoint. If you were to take Dark Souls and Event Horizon and let them make a baby, you'd probably find yourself going to prison. But what you would also find is something very much like Hellpoint. Now on the surface, you have something very much like Dark Souls in playstyle. That's what you call a great foundation. What makes Hellpoint stand out is what they built on top of that foundation. A sci-fi fantasy world and story steeped in strange and arcane lore. A time system that changes the worlds and enemies in the world depending on where in orbit you find yourself on the station, which is around a black hole. So if you're at the like apex of the black hole, you're gonna have harder enemies. If you're at one of the side points, secret doors are gonna open. It's, it's a very strange and interesting way to have the game world work. And on top of all that, there's these strange mysteries you gotta find, hidden doors arcane and unknowable gods you could form packs with. It's incredible, I cannot recommend it highly enough. So if you enjoy the Soulsian formula, I really suggest you find Hellpoint and play it. Even better if you're a Twitch streamer because the integration they have is phenomenal. Time for that top three, baby! The Big Dogs. After last year's top 10 video included the spin-off game Judgment, it should come as no surprise to see Yakuza, like a dragon, show up this year. In a move that shocked everyone when they first announced it, this latest entry in the long-running Yakuza franchise swapped out its brawler combat for an RPG system more reminiscent of the newer Dragon Quest entries. I for one love the new system and think it works great with the franchise's signature total whiplash of over-the-top crime drama paired with super goofy slapstick. Add in the new hero Ichiban Kasuga and you have a recipe for success. The man is just so damn lovable. On top of all that, the story has decided to go into what I think are very interesting directions. Exploring what it means to be homeless, how the system really makes it hard for people to get out of that hole once they're in it, the power dynamic between the government and the common working man, even like moral crisis is, is explored with people trying to clean up the city by removing sex workers and the homeless. It's all super interesting stuff that I wish more games would go into and explore. Oh, my second favorite game of the year? Why, it's one of my favorite games from last year. But this time it's actually out and not in early access. That's right, it's Noida. In a vast world map where every pixel is simulated based on its properties, this chaotic roguelike will see you frantically trying to stay alive while the world around you explodes, burns, collapses, gets consumed with acid, fills with smoke and debris. Oh, it's amazing. Your exploration of the dungeon will slowly give way to explorations of the larger world map and the many secrets hidden throughout the world. It's a game that always is somehow larger than you ever think it could be all while giving you the freedom to create your own magic wands of increasing complexity and danger, experimenting with potion mixing and finding out secret recipes, and all kinds of other weird and fun stuff. 
Every death I experience in this game leaves me laughing and wanting more. Finally, it's my number one game of 2020. Not only was this exactly the game I wanted it to be, nay, needed it to be, it's also the game I have undoubtedly sunk the most time into this year. It's Animal Crossing New Horizons. Hitting the scene just as our lives took a turn for the apocalyptically absurd, being able to focus on a small, manageable life free from stress was exactly what I needed. Over the past so many months of this game's existence, I have slowly built myself the perfect house, terraformed the island to match my particular aesthetic, and filled it with a lovable and goofy cast of animal residents with whom I can spend my time. It's not a challenging game, it's not an exciting game, but it's exactly the kind of healing experience I needed in my life this year. Nearly 10 months after its release, and I'm still popping in on the regular, for the seasonal events, birthdays, tournaments, and just to chill out to the relaxing tunes and rhythms of the life of the island of Boxtopia. Oh hey, here's my dream address on the screen if you want to swing by and check out Boxtopia, by the way. So long, 2020, and thanks for all the games. Now let's end this video with a look to the future. My pick for the number one early access game released in 2020 that we could all look forward to in 2021, it's Cyberpunk 2077. Who knows what this game will be like when they finally finish making it? So far I'm loving the bug-filled mess that is the $60 early access version, where I could throw a corpse on a car and have that car bounce its way into the heavens, or just make people stick into a wall and scream at me, and of course having corpses yell obscenities at me. All of these are phenomenal bugs that I'm sure they'll work out one day. So here's to many more years together everyone. See you in the next video, and of course, live on Twitch. Link in the description below, and I'm sure it's flashing on the screen right now. So from my family to yours here at Shake the Box, let's make 2021 a great one.